welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So in this video, I'll be showing you how you can decode GMDSS, that's Global Maritime Distress and Safety System Messages using your SDR receiver and some decoding software on Windows. So first off, I have discussed GDMSS message decoding before, and that was a few months ago when I created a series of videos on Inmarsat, which is a collection of geostationary satellites placed around the globe. Now I showed you how to build a patch antenna and what software to use for decoding these messages. Now these distress messages are also broadcast using other systems, not just satellites. For example, they are also transmitted on the medium wave and the HF bands from a coast radio station. Now these transmissions from the coast radio stations can carry DSC, which is a digital selective calling. Now this means that DSC calls can be made to individual ships, a group of ships, or all stations which are in range. Now out of interest, each DSC equipped ship, shore station and group are assigned a unique nine digit maritime mobile service identity. DSC distress alerts, which consist of a pre-formatted distress message, are used to initiate emergency communications with ships and rescue coordination centers. DSC was intended to eliminate the need for persons on ships or shore to continuously monitor radio receivers on voice radio channels. What is interesting is that GMDSS equipment is required to be powered from three sources of power. These include the ship's normal alternators or generators, then the ship's emergency alternator or generator if they have one fitted, and then a dedicated radio battery supply. Now it's kind of obvious why they would need to have these three power sources available, but the distress safety system is definitely a priority system and you would not want it to fail. The type of equipment ships use to receive or make distress calls varies, and as time progresses, so does technology. Now with the use of a capable SDR receiver and a DSC decoder, we are able to decode and read these GMD SS messages that are being broadcast. Because of the low frequency, you will need to have a good HF antenna. Now technically, these transmissions are FSK with a 170 Hz shift at 100 board and are broadcast on six different medium wave and HF frequencies. I found that I received more of these transmissions on 2187.5 kHz. So first off, we need a decoder. For this, I'm gonna be using YAD, which stands for Yet Another DSC Decoder. I'll leave a link down in the description of where you can download this from. Now, there are some other great utilities on this page too, so it's well worth checking out. Now you can use any SDR receiver or software that you like, as long as you're able to receive on the medium wave and the HF bands. For me, I decided to use my SDR Play RSP DX SDR receiver, along with SDR Play software, SDR Uno. Now as we're going to be piping the audio output from SDR Uno to our decoding software, I use VB Audio Cable to do this. Simply set the SDR software's audio output to VB Audio Cable, and then on the decoder, set the audio input to also be VB Audio Cable. Doing this ensures that the audio that we're receiving will be sent to the decoder for decoding. So here you can see the frequency that we have set to 2.186 kilohertz and that we're using up as sideband. Now the sound that you just heard is that of a GMDSS transmission. Don't worry though, most of these messages that you decode will most likely be test transmissions to ensure that the ship and coast stations are able to communicate with each other. Now once you have everything set up, you wanna make sure that auto tuning is ticked. This helps the decoder lock onto the transmission in case there's any frequency drift. You can also view the audio spectrum using the spectrum tab. Now the three level indicators on the top left are also worth pointing out. The input level indicates how much audio level you have coming from your SDR receiver into the decoder. You want to aim for the needle to hover around the middle while it's receiving a transmission. Now the middle meter measures the signal to noise ratio, higher the better, but there is not much you can do about this without changing your antenna so that the signals are stronger. Now the meter on the right is the CPU load, and that's showing how much processing power your computer is using to decode these messages. Now most modern day computers, you would not need to worry about this, but if you're seeing the CPU load quite high and having unsuccessful decodes, it could be that your computer is not powerful enough to run the software correctly. Now as you can see here, when each message is received and decoded, it is added to the list. From here, you can view each column for each transmission row. We have a date and time stamp of the transmission. We have the type of transmission, and we also have a from and a to. The from and the to shows who sent the message and who the intended recipient was. Now, if you expand these columns, you can clearly see the name of the ship or the name of the coast station. What 
what you'll also notice underneath where you've got the level meters is that when you're receiving a transmission and it's decoding, you'll see the numbers go across the screen and you also see a flickering kind of green LED. That indicates that it's actually decoding the received transmission. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe and like if you're not already a subscriber. And I'd also just like to say a massive thank you to my current patrons. If you want to get involved with that, it's patreon.com forward slash tech minds. Until the next video, guys, take care, stay safe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.